Hello everyone. Welcome to General Chemistry 2. I am Dr. Chapman. I am your lecture professor. So part of what we do on the first day generally is to go through the syllabus and then since this is General Chemistry 2 we move on to other material. Um, so this video is going to take care of the first part of that. We'll talk through the syllabus briefly, um, highlight a few things and have a little laugh about a few things that are left over from when we did things in person. And then I'll start posting uh, real content, lecture material, starting tomorrow. So, first, um, moment of silence for a time when I actually had an office with a phone in it. And, you know, <sighs> so sad. One day we'll get back to that. Okay, so this is General Chemistry 2. It's a continuation of General Chemistry 1. If you did not get past General Chemistry 1 with a C or better, you shouldn't be in this course um, because it's not going to end well. Um, unfortunately, because of the way that material breaks down, General Chemistry 2 is considerably more math heavy than General Chemistry 1. Be warned. If you're the type that struggle, struggles with algebra, this is the course that will beat you up, not General 1. Um, there are no Lewis structures here. There are no, you know, relatively simple problems here. We start from day one with relatively heavy math. And pretty much this is a, something I've said for years that I could ask every single question on every single exam in this course beginning in the, with the word calculate. So be aware of that. If you are the type that struggles with math and you run, a pro run upon a problem, get it fixed quickly. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to do that as we go through this. Um, this is a three credit course and you should be taking, ideally you'd be taking general chemistry two lab at the same time. Um, I realize nothing about the current situation is ideal, so they're not technically overlapping, so you don't have to do it, but it would make more sense to do them together. Um, this is a gen ed course, so it does help to fulfill your gen ed science requirements. So a few things that are really not for you in this document. Um, Learning objectives and learning outcomes, this has nothing to do with you. It's a laundry list of things that you should be able to look back on when it's over and say, oh yeah, I learned that. The idea is that that's the type of thing that transfer institutions would want to see. In-state institutions transfer things automatically, but if you want to go outside of that, they're going to want to see syllabus sometimes. So that's what it's really for. But essentially, it's a, it's a laundry list of what we're going to do. Um, because we haven't done it yet, most of these won't mean anything to you, so don't worry too much about it. But at the end, we should be able to check off that we did pretty much every one of those. Um, I'm not sure what number 15 there is. Maybe it's just a joke. It doesn't belong there. Um, the term assessment, as we see here, is what used to be just the word grading, um, things that we grade. So in this, care, in this course, there are only three items like that. One, there's graded homework from the Mastering, Online, Mastering Chemistry Online system. Yes, you have to buy it. Yes, you have to do it. There'll be assignments for it every week in every chapter. So you're going to have to you're gonna get real good at it. It gives you feedback, and it gives me grading so that I know you're doing your homework and that you're practicing and getting good at it so that when we get to part two here, the exams, I don't have to worry so much. Um, there will be three regular exams and a comprehensive final. So those are going to be spaced out roughly equally throughout the course. So the first one is probably about a month from now. Um, but we'll talk more about that depending on where the material breaks. The textbook, um, Chemistry of Central Science, Brown and LeMay's 14th edition. Um, I don't care which version you get. I don't care if you use an old edition. I don't care if you use the ebook. I don't care if you, you know, use the original. I don't care if you rent it. But you need to read this material before you start watching me talk about it. Otherwise, you're not getting the point. The idea is you read it, get some of it in your brain. The lecture helps connect all the dots. If you have none of it in your brain, the lecture is not going to fill that in. The lecture doesn't cover everything. That's what books are for: is to cover everything. The lectures are supposed to be highlights. So that's how I treat them, and that's how you should think about them as you're doing this. Um, you need to be reading ahead of me as much as possible. It's not hard. The, 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 op the order of topics at least is here, if not week by week what the schedule is. Um, I'll be changing up some of that, but I'll let you know weeks in advance before we change any of the order up of things so that you can prepare properly. Um, so... Um, 
you can buy the mastering code with the ebook. You can buy it without the ebook. It's cheaper without it, but then you still need the book. So it's up to you. Whatever works best for your finances, or whether you have the book from last semester, or whether you have somebody you can borrow it from, whatever, then you don't need to worry about that. But if you don't have it, get it. You're going to need to read this material to practice so that you're ready for the homework and ready for the exams. So, um, the order of topics here, basically I'll say a very little about it, other than the fact that we're going to change the order here. Um, the list of topics, that is, and we're not going to do them in this order. This is just the list of topics from the textbook, textbook directly. Um, I'll tell you outright that basically I've never gotten to nuclear chemistry, and I barely get to the end of electrochemistry, and that's talking really fast in certain places. There are places in this list that we need to slow down a lot, so... Um, these are more than a week each, and some of them two weeks and then some each. So we lose a few days here and there. Um, so we have to kind of compensate for that. So we probably will not get to 21, just so you know ahead of time. Supplementary stuff, these are not assignments. This is just if you needed to look at another version of the same explanation to kind of get a different perspective on it. There's a lot of different things we could use. Um, at this institution, we've used the book that's number one here, Ab uh, Coates and Trico. We've also used Ebbing and Gammon, number five here, to teach this exact course. So those are comparable. Um, they just don't have as good of an online presence as, a, as the homework system, so that's why they're no longer our textbook, and this one is. So the others here obviously are comparable, but we like this one better for the same reason, that we got a better deal out of having a a homework system that goes with it and helps the supplements so that you practice and get feedback before the exams themselves. All right, other stuff. Um, you need a scientific calculator and you need to know how to use it. That should have happened long ago. If it hasn't, you are in dire trouble at this point because you're going to use that calculator every single day on every single problem almost. And it's not an exaggeration. I wish it were. Um, so get one if you don't already have it get the instructions that go with it so you can find out how to do certain things with it. Um, basically, you're going to use it all the time. And while there are a couple of phone apps that will work to do homework with, they're not great. You just, you're just better off with a regular calculator most of the time. All right. Um, general grading policy stuff. This is not really general. This is my grading policy. So I can print it out on a separate page for you to give you your own version of it. But this is it. Homework will be 20% of your grade. The regular exams are 60%, final exam is 20 That's all there is to it. So um, there's not a lot to say there. So um, things I do have to say, one, don't take the exams. Not much I can do about it. End of story. Um, number two, don't cheat on my exams. Um, I spent most of the summer dealing with people who cheat on exams there, and it's not fun for me. It's a lot of extra paperwork and stress, and it's not fun for them. It's a lot of extra zeros, and their GPA drops. So don't join them. It's a bad idea. Um, if you believe you can get away with it, you know, I'll tell you that both Course Hero and Chegg are very friendly when asked for information. So I don't think it's a good idea. Don't do it. Um, number three, late work. Well, that's not going to happen because there's going to be deadlines every week for homework, and the exams are going to be within a very tight time frame. There's not going to be any late work. Um, if there's something missed, it might be excused, but it's not going to be accepted late. Um, that's just the way it is. So in terms of the course, because I don't do a lot of other grading other than the homework, I don't have to worry so much about the the other uh, aspects of people cheating, but I still expect you to do this. The whole point of the homework is get you ready for the exams. The point of the exams is to get you ready for the final so that you're ready for the next time you see this material, if ever. So, you know, take it seriously and practice and you'll get out of this course just fine. Don't take it seriously and goof off and, you know, don't, don't address problems when they come up and you're going to have some problems with it. Um, attendance and lateness, well, we're doing this asynchronously, so there's not really relevant. Again, this is leftovers from when we did things in person. Um, same for the other one, electronic devices. You're not allowed to use the type of thing that you're using right now to watch this video, so ha ha ha. Um, to give you an idea of how old the person is who wrote this document, I don't think many of you have ever even seen a working pager. Um, you may have heard of it if you've listened to like gangster rap music from the 90s. 
but I doubt you've ever seen one. And I definitely doubt that anyone in this course has ever owned one other than me. Um, I think I had that before I had my first cell phone. So, uh, yeah, it's going back longer than most of you have been alive. Probably all of you. Okay. Um, computers and recording devices. Yeah, don't, don't record this recording while you're watching it back. So, again, kind of silly. Um, code of conduct, you really should read that because it has other things in it other than just don't cheat. Um, but it's a good thing to look at. It's not a long thing. Um, so have a look at it. It's on the Bergen website. I don't know exactly where, but it's not hard to find. Okay, support services. Uh, believe it or not, we still do have a tutoring center. The room number is not an issue because they're not working in person, but they are doing live tutoring uh, by Zoom or by Web WebEx, whatever the video conferencing apps are that are available. So you still can get tutoring for this course if you need it. Now, one thing I will say here more than anything else is that to do well in this course, you need to keep up with it. That means if you start to trip over something, you get answers and get it toned up quickly. You don't let it sit there until the next chapter or the first exam hits you because then you're doomed. Um, you have to address struggles as they happen. You can't wait and hope that it makes more sense two weeks from now. At that point, we're 50 pages further on in the book and there's a dozen more topics in between. So you don't have time to lose something because you get stuck. Address questions quickly. You have my email. It can, you know, it's why you know that this is even posted. Ask questions. If you don't want, if you don't, if you want to get a tutor, get one. Um, the tutoring center, they're free like twice a week. You can make two appointments a week. I think they're half hour slots. The point is they can help you with stuff more one to one than I can do reasonably. So do so. Um, take advantage of it. It's provided. It's part of the college's mission and they have good tutors for this course because I trained some of them. So use them. Um, more serious things here, um, if you have any type of documented disability, we have an office that covers that and they take care of any accommodations that go with it. Um, in the past, that's been things like um, note takers. I've had a court stenographer once, which was weird because I got to see how many times I say um and how many times I clear my throat in class. Not really pleasant for a speaker to see how badly of a speaker you are. Um, I also had uh, sign language interpreters, which you know, it's the only time I kind of knew what the issue was. Um, otherwise, they, they do not communicate to me what, what the issue is. They just tell me this student gets this accommodation, period, the end. Um, it's not my business to know that, and you shouldn't feel any need to tell me that if you go through their services. That's, that's your medical privacy is your issue. Um, generally, the accommodations are fairly simple to manage. So, but if you need that and, you know, have any reason to need them, talk to them. They are very helpful. And, and some of my students that have, that have used their services have, have done extremely well in the course because they had a real opportunity to do so rather than have something outside the material impeding them. So if you need their help, then get in contact with them and they will help you. Um, faculty absences because, you know, yeah, I'm going to be absent from the downstairs of my house where I'm broadcasting this from right now. Um, obviously, this is not relevant because we don't have. I can't be absent. I can't go anywhere. I barely leave the house, so I'm not going to be absent from anything. Um, student accounts. Presumably, you all know this. If you don't know Moodle, you're not getting very far with this video because that's where it's going to be posted. But um, self-service should be how you're registered for this. But we need to tell people about it when we did this in person, so you should know this all stuff relatively well. Um, again, core competencies, this is about accreditation. It's not really about you. So um, we won't spend the time on those right now. So um, if you haven't already gotten it, this document is on Moodle in the introduction section of the course. Um, it's a PDF file, so you can download it if you need it. Um, and material will start getting posted relatively soon. So welcome to the course, and good luck.